Hello crypto fam, thanks for tuning back into my channel. Today we will discuss what is Rapbeat. Now once you connect your wallet on OpenSea and click on the wallet icon, you can see on the screen there are two sections, ETH on Ethereum and ETH on Polygon. Now you may not see this ETH on Polygon section, you will only see this section when you have some Ethereum on Polygon chain. Now if you click on the three dots next to ETH on Ethereum, you can see a third option to wrap. If you click on wrap, you can see that you can convert your Ether to wrap Ether or WETH. Now if you click on the three dots next to ETH on Polygon, you can see there is no third option to wrap. Now in this video, we will try to understand what are these three different forms of Ether, namely ETH on Ethereum, ETH on Polygon and wrapped ETH. Now the reason you don't see wrap option for ETH on Polygon chain is because this ETH on Polygon is actually wrapped ETH. And I know this is pretty confusing and please watch the video till the end and hopefully this concepts will become more clear by then. Now in my next video, I'm also going to show you a tutorial on how to get ETH on Polygon to buy NFTs on Polygon chain. In my opinion, don't use the bridge to Polygon option on OpenSea because if you bridge it from Ethereum to Polygon, you have to pay that high gas fees on Ethereum. Instead, I would recommend directly transfer Matic to Metamask via Matic chain from exchanges such as Binance and KuCoin. I'll show you all the steps, so don't worry. Just stay tuned for my next video. Consider subscribing to me so that you don't miss the next video. One more question that you may have in your mind is, why is ETH required on Polygon to buy NFTs? Because Matic is the native currency of Polygon chain and is used to pay gas fees on Polygon. So it makes sense to use Matic to buy Polygon NFTs. Now the answer to this question is very specific to OpenSea and we will eventually discuss that in today's video. Now let's start our discussion on Rapdeeth. Now one Rapdeeth is equals to one ETH. There is one is to one ratio between both of these. Now one thing that you remember from your earlier videos on ERC721 contract and ERC1155 contract is that we use these contracts to mint our NFTs or non-fungible tokens. Now there is another category of tokens which are fungible meaning you can have lots of copies of single token. You write an ERC20 contract to create these tokens. Now some example of ERC20 tokens are DAI, USDC, UNI etc. Now what does it mean to be an ERC20 token? Now any token that is created by a contract that follows ERC20 standard is an ERC20 token. Let me show you the ERC20 token standard on ethereum.org website. Now I am on ethereum.org website and this is the page for ERC20 token standard. Now let me show you all the methods and events that needs to be implemented. Take a look. If a smart contract implements the following methods and events, it can be called an ERC20 token standard. And once deployed, it will be responsible to keep track of the created tokens on Ethereum. Now, these are the methods that needs to be implemented and these two are the events that needs to be implemented. Now, I'm going to show you the wrapped Ether contract and we are actually going to verify whether the contract code actually implements all this or not. Now this is the wrapped ether contract on ethereum. So this contract is actually a standard for wrapped ether. So if you want to wrap your ether, you can call this contract. However, it is possible that you can also write your own contract to wrapped ether. But in my opinion, always go with true and trusted and audited code. And since this has, and since this contract has proved to be trustworthy, better use this contract rather than reinventing the wheel and writing your own contract. Okay. Now let's, you can also see there have been around 5.8 million transactions with this contract. Let's click on contract and this is the code and you can see it implements deposit, withdraw, total supply, approve, Take a look, total supply, approve and then transfer, transfer from Take a look transfer and transfer from and you can also see the events approval event transfer event deposit event withdrawal event transfer event approval event so it also implements some other extra functions parameters etc however this follow the norms of erc20 token standard so we can actually call 
this contract and ERC20 contract. Now any token that such contract creates will be an ERC20 compliant token or ERC20 token. Now do you think Ether is ERC20 standard compliant? Remember Ether is the native currency for Ethereum blockchain and is there since the creation of the Ethereum blockchain. However, ERC20 token standard was introduced later on. Now the answer to this question is no, Ether is not ERC20 standard compliant as I already mentioned because ERC20 standard was introduced later on. However, ETH was the native currency from the start of the creation of the Ethereum blockchain. Now you may ask what is the problem with ETH not following ERC20 token standard. So the problem is that if you are dealing with both ETH and other ERC20 tokens, you have to write code to handle both of these separately. And since most of the people have Ether in their wallet because they need to pay gas fees anyway, it makes sense they want to swap it for other ERC20 tokens. You may have seen all these different exchanges where you swap your ETH for some other token. Now this process will be simplified if Ether can be converted into an ERC20 token and then we can handle both of them similarly. So it really boils down to the ease of writing code and dealing with Ether similar to other ERC20 tokens. That's why we wrap Ether and use wrapped Ether. Now this is the similar line of reasoning followed for other native coins like Bitcoin. Now you may have heard about wrapped Bitcoin. So if you want to use Bitcoin on Ethereum blockchain and trade it with other ERC20 tokens, you wrap it up and convert it into an ERC20 token. Now next thing that I want like to discuss is in the start of the video I have shown you different forms of Ethereum so I would like to discuss that. I have opened up this answer on ethereum.stackexchange.com. I'll give you the link into the description as well. So first is on Ethereum blockchain this ETH. So this is the native token the utility token which is used to pay the gas fees. Then on Ethereum blockchain itself WETH which is the ERC20 wrapper for ETH. Now on Polygon chain, this Matic is the native utility token and that is used to pay gas fees on Polygon blockchain. Now on Polygon itself, W Matic is the ERC20 wrapper for Matic. Now on Polygon itself, wrap ETH. Now this is a Polygon ERC20 representation for Polygon ETH that was bridged from Ethereum mainnet. Now if you remember, I said there is no option to wrap for ETH on Polygon since this is wrapped ETH. So one thing that you must understand is that ETH exists in its native form only on Ethereum blockchain. If it exists on any other blockchain, that means it is in some form wrapped. So that's why you might have a question that, okay, on Polygon, I am not bridging it from Ethereum blockchain to Polygon blockchain. However, on Polygon itself, I'm trying to buy this Ethereum with the Matic or any other token, I'm trying to swap it on, on Polygon itself. So I'm not bridging anything from Ethereum. I'm natively trying to buy a Ethereum on Polygon blockchain. Even then it will exist in some wrapped form. Okay. So if ETH exists anywhere apart from Ethereum, that is going to be in some form wrapped. Okay. In nutshell, the different forms of Ethereum. And one more thing to note here is this is wrapped ETH on Ethereum and this is wrapped ETH on Polygon. So they both are different. Okay. Now the another question that I want to Answer is why does OpenSea uses wrapped ETH instead of Matic to pay for Polygon NFTs? So this has something very specific to do with OpenSea. So if you take a look at their documentation, so I'm not going to go over all the documentation, but only the main point that they think because of it they use wrapped ETH is take a look here. Most users still do not have Polygon's native Matic token in their wallets to pay for gas fees. Okay, that's why they use wrapped ETH. So they believe that most of the users will anyway have ETH on Ethereum. So that's why they give an option on their website itself where you can bridge this Ethereum to Polygon and then you can use wrapped ETH to pay for your NFTs. So that's the reason they are not using Matic tokens. Now the next question would be then who pays the gas fees on Polygon because as you know Matic is required to pay the gas fees and also you might know that gas is completely free on Polygon chain. So the answer for this question is actually explained over here in this post on github.com. I'll give you the link into the description. So the idea is that the 2.5% service fee that OpenSea charges, it pays the gas fees from that. So that's why the 
person who is buying the NFT need not pay the gas fees on Polygon. This will be taken care by the OpenSea. In case you want to know how this is happening on the code level, uh, you can actually relay the transactions as mentioned over here. You can actually check out this article for more explanation. But as a relayer, you can pay the gas fees matic for your users so your users need not pay the gas fees so check out this link i'll give you the link into the description so that's the reason wrapped eth or w eth is used on polygon chain to buy polygon nfts instead of matic on OpenSea. yeah so that is it for this video folks i hope you understood what is wrapped eth what are these different forms of eth and why is wrapped eth used on OpenSea at multiple places now, as I said in the starting of the video also, the next video is going to be a tutorial on how to actually obtain Rabdith in your Polygon wallet so that you can buy Polygon NFTs. So stay tuned for that video. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below in the comment box and I'll do my best to answer all the questions. And I'm also looking to make a Discord channel of mine. So stay tuned for that. I'll hopefully announce it soon. And thank you so much. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.